being located in the Music City, this building has hosted a lot of great music acts since its inception, but this is what she was made for, NFL football, and that's what we have today in Nashville at Nissan Stadium. The whole of downtown Nashville likely still reverberating with the sounds of the Titans taking the field a moment ago. They're ready for football as their Titans are set to match up with the Baltimore Ravens. This is Derek Henry. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Well, these two teams, of course, the Titans and Ravens, met in the postseason a year ago. And, and really, along with the Titans win the previous week in Foxborough, it was one of the shockers of the postseason. The Titans, a sixth seed on the road. The Ravens, they were the top seed, riding a 12-game win streak and coming off the first round bye. But... Where that game was all Tennessee. They led 28 to 6 at one point, ultimately winning 28 to 12 and sending them on to the AFC title game in Kansas City. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incomplete. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. On his Kern, the punter, to send this one away. This will be a 41-yard punt, three on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. Jackson and the Ravens come up now, first and 10, right at the 30. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Well, you know, paramount for this defense is trying to keep Lamar Jackson somewhat contained when he tries to run. They did a pretty good job of it there. And you know what's so difficult for every defense that has to prepare for Lamar Jackson? You have to think and play at the same time. And I know that sounds like something you're supposed to do, but when you have to think about your assignments against him, it often slows down your feet. You don't move as fast. You've got to be prepared. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Complete to Hollywood, Marquise Brown, 62 yards. And the Ravens have taken the early lead. Well, you've got to like that start on both sides of the football. You force the three and out, and then you score on your first drive. Well, I know someone who doesn't like that start. Well, yeah, the other side. Yeah, they don't like that at all, right? This is not the way it's supposed to be. But what you just described, that's team football. All right, when you get a three and out, you're supposed to take advantage of it on the offensive side of the ball. You said, thank you very much for getting us to rock. Let's put it in the end zone, and they did exactly that. Just Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And no return here for Evans as they will bring this out to the 25. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. 
get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play. Yeah. That too. <laughs> It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Next the receivers have spread the defense out, and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. Now the second down throw on target. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. Out of the gun, Tannehill over the middle to Smith. A gain of six there on first. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Good. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it's going to yield a new set of downs. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Derek Henry. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. From the 50, it's Tannehill throwing over the middle. And it's incomplete. They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes. With a big third down coming up, he's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming on third and eight. From the gun, here's Tannehill. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Here's Brett Kern now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game. But this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football. Because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. They'll run. This is Gus Edwards. And he's upended at the six as they double their room to maneuver on a pickup of three. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they gave up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down, that's what they talk about to us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third long coming up. 
back near your own goal line, I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle? Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. You gotta try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. And he's able to get this one up to the eight-yard line this time. It'll be a gain of four, but it won't be enough. It leaves him with a fourth down now. Fourth down. Here's Sam Cook now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. And he'll take it just outside the 40. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And the Titans are going to start this drive in great field position as they take over first and 10. down carry for Henry. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. From the 40 now on second down, Tannehill. And he'll get this underneath to Henry. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. A gain of 13, it's a first down. As a passer, we're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. First down, it's Henry, and he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now on second and 13. Tannehill, he'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. The reception, good for seven. It's third down. It's a gain of seven. Brings up third and six. Here's Tannehill. They set up the screen for Henry. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. That's good. An effective seven yard third down conversion. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sensed that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Back to the ground now, it's Henry. And they get to him quickly here as he stops right around the 13. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On second and seven, Tannehill. Henry's got it, out on the left side. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. From 13 yards out. And the Titans are an extra point away from tying this thing up. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone.
So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded right around the eight. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Ravens offense back out there. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Jackson with a handoff to Dobbins on the option. And some room to roam now. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. That one good for 33 and a first. The safeties were well back there, and he had a lot of room. Were they in the cover, too? Yeah, they were, and the safeties were back. You know, usually they're 12 to 15 yards off the line of scrimmage, somewhere around the hash mark for each of them. But what also happens if the linebackers dive into the line, if you block them initially, that blocker can come off of them and get up to the safeties on the second level, and now you've got a big place to run the football. Daquan Jones in on the tackle there. Jones well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. From the 30 on second down, Jackson. It's brought in here by Willie Sneed. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. First down, Ravens. These two teams all tied after one. The score tied. Seven to seven. Option play, and they'll hand to Dobbins. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. No game on the Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Looking to throw on second down. Jackson. That's complete to his running back, J.K. Dobbins. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. And that's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, short tackle. They set up the screen for Dobbins. And he's going to be stopped well short of what he needed as the tackle is made at the 18-yard line. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. What you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And the Ravens strike first at three zip. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through.
Just Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. From the six. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. He takes this for three to the 29. Derrick Henry, the ball. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. the ball carrier. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards a carry at the moment. The Titans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Now it's Tannehill. Steps away to his left. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Tannehill able to take off and pick up the first as well. Certainly making his presence felt in both the pass and the run game. He's having an impact. So yeah, his first carry of the game right there. He had hurt him with his arm. Now he's showing that he can shuffle the puppies as well. They'll run the jet sweep with Brown. And he is across midfield from 149 to the other 49. A gain of just two. The defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. This is Henry. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? The Titans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and six. Tannehill now to throw. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Tannehill to his top target, Brown, for a Tennessee first. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. They'll run on first down. Henry. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They'll run with Henry. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And all the way down to the 17-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. I actually love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Henry. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Looking to throw again on second down. Tannehill. That'll be caught by Brown. Touchdown, Tennessee. Wow. 
10 yards on the touchdown pass. And the Titans are going to retake the lead. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play, even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor, in effect. Extra point good by Gaskowski. And the lead is now 14-10. to 10. Koski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Rashawn Evans out of Alabama had the tackle defensively. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. They'll try to run for it with Dobbins. Dobbins hit, and he fumbles. It's picked up by the Titans. And the return here will go to the 31-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. A shotgun handoff to Henry. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gun. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. So the delay of game penalty backs him up. It's now second and seven. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. It's caught on the right side at Smith. And he will score. Touchdown. Titans. Three touchdown passes now for Ryan Tannehill. And the Titans are going to add on to their lead. And what a weapon he is at the tight end spot because when they throw him the football downfield, they count on him getting additional yardage almost every time. And that's exactly what he did there. Caught that, ran with it, all the way to the end zone. Goskowski with the extra point. And that makes it a 21-10 game.
Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. And this will make it into the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available, and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. This pass into the arms of Sneed, and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. Well, I can certainly tell my age, partner, because when I I was a kid running backs like J.K. Dobbins with over 2,000 yards in their final season in college they went early in the draft instead he somehow lasted until the second round but how great is it to get a guy with that ability who can run it inside run to the perimeter and catch the football in the backfield to be able to get him in the second round that's what I call a steal 49 yard line a three yard pickup brings up second and seven Coming up on second and seven. From the gun, Jackson. Caught by Sneed over the middle. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 36. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Well, remember, they tried to give him the ball and let him run on the last play, but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind, and this time... They get it to him the more conventional way, and it's much more successful as well. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Throwing again, Jackson, and his throw here is incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there, but now it's third down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Now play number seven of the drive as you're looking at a third and ten. And Jackson throwing once more. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. It's one of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Just 
to Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. From the six. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. It's complete to Brown, right side. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Throwing again on second down. Tannehill. Flush to his right. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. him to only a yard and it's second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. And he finds Corey Davis. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. 22 yards there, a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Tannehill. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. Give him six on the play, and it'll make it second down. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. At the 29-yard line. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the left hash, this from 46. And this one is right down the middle. And the lead now 11, 24 to 13. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one, two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. Seconds, all that remains of this first half is the kick is away. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. 
So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Fielded near the back of the end zone, and he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start by running the option to the right. He'll have a first down past the 40 as he'll get this one up to the 44-yard line. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Jackson fakes the give and keeps it. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. It's going to be a gain of six on the keeper, but it leads to a third down. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he's still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. On third down, here's Dobbins. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. He'll get a couple yards on that one, and it'll give him a fresh set of downs. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. A gain of three, second down. Now a timeout being called as there's an injured Titan down on the field. Well, he gets attended to, we'll step aside. Second down at seven. An option handoff here to Dobbins. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Well, every now and then we have to let a cliche fly, partner. And in this case, what do they say in the NFL? Your best ability is often your availability. And this is an extremely durable kid coming out of Ohio State carried the ball every time they even thought about running it. Wore down defenses and able to break big runs late in games. J.K. Dobbins going to Baltimore, an absolute perfect fit. And he's got his man, Marquise Brown. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. First and 10, it's Jackson. A throw over the middle, caught by Bryant. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. You know, Lamar Jackson last season, the first NFL quarterback with 3,000 or more passing yards and 1,000 or more rushing yards in the same season. And we've seen both of those talents on display here today. We just saw another completed pass. And everyone knew coming out of college he could run the ball. But for some reason, we didn't analyze it throwing the way we should have. I think every time he completes a pass, he says to himself, take that, evaluators. You guys really missed the boat on me. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Dobbins going to take the handoff on the option. 
And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great, because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. On third down, Jackson. And that'll be complete to Dobbins. And he will not be able to get the first as he can get this only down to the five. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. We can make this one pretty simple. Blocked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? Fourth down, here's Jackson. And my goodness, this is incomplete. The Ravens go for it, but come up empty. And it'll be a turnover on downs. So a top pill to swallow there. A would-be touchdown pass in and out of his hands on four. Sometimes it just comes down to execution, doesn't it? Because we're always questioning, should they go for it, should they not? Is it the right play call, is it not? In this situation, everything was right except for the finish. You have to catch the ball and convert. And able to use his stiff arm for a little bit of leverage before he's taken down. A pretty good game. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. The last run got six. Now second and four. Out of the gun, Tannehill. Over the middle to Smith. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to it. 11 yards there, first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Tannehill. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards it. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. First and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Again, it's Henry. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Two things to watch. First, his strength and being able to break out of that initial contact. But at his size, once you slow his momentum, it's hard for him to get it started again and end up tackling him behind the line of scrimmage. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And right side, Henry's got it. And they'll get this across the midfield stripe, but still winding up short of the first down. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. They completed the screen, but one of the things you worry about is can the quarterback get rid of the ball before he's actually tackled? So your offensive linemen have to hold up the rushers a little bit because you want to make sure you keep your guy's jersey clean throughout the game. 
And now a high kick trying to pin him back. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Amazing. Perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. Able to bust through the tackle, but not much to show for it. Still inside the five. Mark, give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know the pressure is going to be tough defensively. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. From the gun, it's Jackson. And Bryant's got it over the middle. And they'll get him down up past the 15. 15 yards on the play, first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. A fight for the football, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the safety, Kenny Vaccaro. Intercepted. The Titans take over first and On first down, it's Henry. Number Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down. Get to the fourth quarter. Try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. From the 40 now on second down, Tannehill. That's complete to his tight end, Ferkser. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. First and 10 at the 31 yard line. going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the gun, here's Tannehill. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. Tennessee getting the first down on a big play of 18 yards. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the red zone now, Tannehill. This will be caught at about the six. And the Titans are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Throwing again is Tannehill. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to A.J. Brown that time, but it'll be second and goal. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Try to punch it in with Henry. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Derrick Henry, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Titans are able to extend their lead. Could not block that one any better. Everyone was accounted for, and a great surge by the offensive line. And the lead is up to 18 now. It is good. Makes the score Titans 31, Ravens 13.
Goskowski. Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. And the Ravens taking the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Now this one to his running back out of the backfield. Yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? The throw over the middle, taken in. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Now Jackson on first down toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. To throw again, Jackson. Flushed out right. He'll run it. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here at a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. To throw again is Jackson. Now he'll pull it down. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. The last drive, remember, similar situation. He forced a ball into coverage through the pick. He learned better there. Yeah, similar to a golfer that's confronted with a shot that you just can't make. Sometimes you have to take your medicine, as they say, right? Just pull it down, take off, and go. Don't make something worse than what it was. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. He's already fumbled once in this game, and I thought the ball started to jostle there a little bit, but they got to him quickly at the line of scrimmage. They sure did. And remember, if you're not a very confident runner and you've already dropped it once, if there's traffic around you, the only thing you think about is protecting the football, not gaining yards. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Jackson going to run. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that will bring up an interesting decision here on fourth and goal. And goal. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Tucker's kick is good. And that'll get the deficit down to 15. Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still going to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back into it. As you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity.
Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. They begin with Henry. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It's a first down on a gain of 10. But normally you might say, start running the football, you've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. 16 yards, a first down. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. <laughs> go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. Escaping the pressure right. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Second and four. Henry. And he's going to be down close to a first down at the Ravens 30. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. This one caught by Davis. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. The Titans efficient passing on this drive. There's another first down. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era. We think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. That's all they care about right now. They'll run on first down. Henry, and he will score! Touchdown, Titans! Taking it in from 11 yards out, and the Titans find a way to stretch their lead. Well, three scores in this game. I think that deserves some type of a broad gesture. I know in hockey, that's called a hat trick, and people throw their hats out on the ice. What about us? What can we do for this guy? Well, if I'm his teammates, I'm buying him a little steak dinner tonight, right? At least a skirt steak, probably a filet. Oh, you're going big. I like that. Yeah, I mean, skirt is I mean, skirt filet steak, at maximum. On. You can't get the guy a skirt steak. That's skirt steak. Filet, time. filet yeah, 10 Porter, ounce, 16 Porter, ounce. Porterhouse. Fine.
Steven Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Marquise Brown was the intended target. And it's second down. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw. And they're under 200 yards passing for the game. So they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game. And that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them, holding them under 200 today. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there, first down. This game just keeps evolving and changing, doesn't it? You got a tight end who can move around a lot, not necessarily using a big body on him. Sometimes you take a corner, a better cover guy, and put him on him and try and take him out of the game as we've seen in this one. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've taken him out of the game. That was just his first catch. Big reason they're losing right now. Uh, here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. They're giving those short little routes. Tackled him in bounds, too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes. But now you've got to have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. To throw again on second down. Jackson stepping up. He'll try and run. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. Looked at me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield, and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. Complete to number By the skin of their teeth, they are able to convert on third and inches. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position is to actually utilize more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it, but he's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put there. Yeah, didn't get the big yardage there you might out of a smaller back. Jackson throwing on target to Brown. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. Raven first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the gun, Jackson. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Again on second and 10, it's Jackson. Bryant with a catch right side. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 18. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. It's worth noting when you talk about Jackson's running ability, the Baltimore wide receivers had just over 1,400 receiving yards combined last year. And, Charles, that was the fewest yards by a wide receiver group in the NFL since 2011. And, partner, I expect that number to go up this year. Last season, Lamar Jackson got very comfortable with his tight end group. In fact, he had one tight end and went to the Pro Bowl. But I think now, because of his ability to run the ball, it'll bring defenders closer to the line of scrimmage, and you'll see more big plays from the wide receivers downfield. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Throwing again. Jackson. Incomplete. 
This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're thinking to stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, Jackson. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byer. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Pass intercepted. The Titans take over first and ten. They'll try and choose some clock with Henry. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. Good. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs, clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners taking care of the football because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. So this one, a Tennessee Titan victory. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points, that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal. That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea they wanted to accomplish, just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Titans are winners here as we say so long from Nashville.